Hey, homeowners. Hopefully you guys had a great, fantastic Thanksgiving, and hopefully you guys are enjoying HomeBot. Uh, HomeBot's an amazing tool that I've uh, subscribed to, that I pay for, uh, so that you guys are getting information um, way more hacker than you're getting from Zillow or Redfin. Um, and what's cool about the information is that anytime you have any questions, um, you can actually, once you click on them, it actually goes directly to me, so I can respond to you. Um, so it's you know it's me. Uh, it's not some customer service rep from India. It's it's definitely me that's reaching out. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out and press those buttons, play around with it. Um, it's going to give you updates in regards to home values, uh, rent, appreciation, Airbnb, uh, even potential refi opportunities, which there really are none right now, unless you're trying to consolidate debt. So hopefully you guys are enjoying HomeBot. Um, I get a report once a week in regards to those, how many people uh, log into HomeBot. And it's pretty funny to see how, people, how much people enjoy looking at a whole bot. So uh, no shame. It's it's for you guys. It's meant That's what it's meant for. So have fun with it. Enjoy it. Have a good time with it. So today I want to kind of go into kind of a, a market update from the last one I did. For those who just joined on HomeBot or just got HomeBot, uh, if you want to take a look at my, the past videos I've done through HomeBot, and th that way you have a better idea as what it looks like to be a homeowner, subscribe to my YouTube channel. All My YouTube channel has all the past HomeBot videos that you can check out talking about um you know, professionals you want to get involved with your life, uh, property taxes, home insurance, appreciation, how it works, how it works with Swiss selling, uh, how using your VA loan again. I have a bunch of other videos too that you can take at, take a look at my VA Fridays, Market Mondays, uh, and some other videos that I'm working on my YouTube series that I'm starting. So uh, feel free to subscribe and uh, uh, learn more about what you can do with the house that you just bought. So uh, to, before we get started, I want to do a quick dad joke for you guys and we'll kind of get started from there. Okay. So, um, this one goes, I went to see a new movie that they made about air conditioning. I wasn't a fan, a fan. Beep, beep. All right. So last market update we did was probably about in the summer. Right. And, you know, there's a lot of changes that's happened over the course of the, of the year. And I told everyone before what, when we did our pre-approval meetings is that expect mortgage rates go up throughout the year. Uh, we're And November is kind of like the turning point. So a lot of you guys have taken my advice and we're going to suggest, you know, buying the house as little as you can um you know if you guys bought between probably between may and now uh you know mortgage rates went up really really high past six percent sometimes seven um so between those two things you know we're trying to figure out you know is our mortgage rates going to be like that for the for a while um my answer to that question is no this as much as i i told you guys before this is a very much a transition phase um and you guys are going to be very happy to the to find out that, you know, the fact that you guys bought a house now, it will definitely pay out next year. It just sucks, right? We get, we give it that. So here's what's happening over the last, since uh, up to November 10th. And now what we expect November 10th being the turning point over the next couple months, um, so that we expect mortgage rates to come down the first half of next year. So um, throughout the summer into November, mortgage rates went up and basically they're in the high sevens, um, high sevens, mid sevens, things like that. Conventional even high, went as high as 8%. Uh, VA, for, VA and FHA and USDA stayed around 7.5%, and even and sometimes might have creeped up a little bit higher, but for the most part, they, they stayed under 8%, uh, which, you know, saying those numbers is really tough, especially in last December uh, 2021, we saw mortgage rates at 3.5%. So basically, they've doubled, and maybe and even more so. Now, the, the reason why mortgage rates went up this past year throughout this year is because inflation. Inflation was the big thing that drove mortgage rates. And it's always been the big thing to drive mortgage rates. A lot of people were scared about the Fed funds rate, but I actually like the Fed funds rate. You know, I like it going up because it only points toward the direction that inflation would come down. And guess what I just said? Mortgage rates will follow inflation. So uh, the, the first uh, more Fed funds rate was in March. Uh, March and then throughout the year they raised it six or seven times. Now we're at like three and a quarter, uh, around three to three and a half, three four, three and a half, uh, for the Fed funds rate. Now a lot of people think it impacts immediately. Actually, it takes a while. It takes about six to ten months, six to eight months for the the Fed rate to impact inflation. So whatever we saw in March is now what we're finally seeing uh, to start impacting, and then it's stone is, and then as it, it cascades from there. A lot of people think it, uh, and the other thing is that the Fed funds rate has not is not a does not have direct control over the Fed over the mortgage rates, totally separate, but they are influenced. So essentially, this is how this how this works. This qualitative analysis, 
Fed fund rates, Fed funds rate goes up. Inflation goes down. Mortgage rates go down. That's that's as simple as that. So uh, I, I don't want to get too crazy detail, but for, that's essentially how that process works. A lot of people think it's mortgage rates go up because Fed rates go up. That is not true. Um, it has to do with something else completely. Um, Fed funds rate do impact consumers in the idea in the idea of credit cards, short, short-term loans. Short-term loan is considered anything less than like 10 years. That's that's effectively what we're looking at. It doesn't really impact mortgage rates. Uh, it impacts more of like personal loans, car loans, student loans, uh, auto loans, credit cards, store cards, things like that. And those... And when the Fed raises those Fed fund rates, it doesn't it doesn't impact those until about sixty days later. It impacts it on the new lines of credit. So if you get new lines of credit, that's what's going to go up. That's what's going to be higher than what it was before. So now that we cleared that up, what we're expecting is that, uh, and what we expected to happen November tenth was that a big inflation report came out and it showed that inflation was turning. Um, it showed at zero point five, but that was only it went down zero point five. So if we were at 8.5% 8, 8. Uh, for inflation, it went down to 8, right? Or even potentially less than 8. Now, why? so that was only one reading, though. You need to have, to have a few more readings to have a, to establish a trend, typically two or three uh, more readings to show that inflation is curving. It could be just kind of a blip, but November 10th was expected. That more inflation was expected to come down. The next thing is December 10th and January 10th for the same reports. We're expecting that it continuously improves inflation as inflation comes down. The goal of the Fed is that they're trying to get inflation down to 2%. Uh, we are well above that, obviously. So as they raise these Fed funds rate, they're gonna, their goal is that after six to eight months um, from the initial increase of the Fed funds rate, inflation starts to curve. And then we start seeing the trend of inflation going down. Um, you guys all, all heard, it, heard that the there's a big recession coming up over the next year. Um, and that's that's probably true. Uh, we've had all the indications that we needed to show that we we're going to have a recession. There's a bunch of them. Two quarters of negative GDP, uh, treasury yield curve inversion. Uh, we saw a slowing down of uh, economic growth, production all across the globe. So if we go through recession, a lot of the uh, international markets are going to go into recession as well because we're all tied. So as we go into recession, what's nice about recession is that mortgage rates also are at, typically at their best as well. So further points that mortgage rates come down. So the next big reading is December 10th and November 10th. If those reports improve, if inflation improve, improves on those reports, we are definitely going to, we are, it's more promising that mortgage rates will start coming down to the 5% range in the first half of next year. Now, I'm very hopeful, and I want to cross my fingers. This is my big, hairy goal. Uh, I think I missed an A there. But uh, big, hairy goal is that in the last half of next year, we might actually see 4% again, which is that actually kind of where mortgage rates are typically in that range. Uh, to see it less than 3 is very, very, very rare. Uh, the fact that some people get, uh, took advantage of that, and now VA assumptions are kind of a big thing. Uh, if you guys want to know more about VA assumptions, check out my VA assumptions videos um, in my YouTube channel. But um, that's that's been a big talk right now. Uh, for some people, it may work. Most people, it won't because of all the other implications that go with it. But uh, to see uh, interest rates to be below 3%, you're better off getting struck by lightning. Um, so for those who took advantage of it, good on you. Uh, unfortunately, the average mortgage rate is about 4 to 5%. So uh, if you're in that range, you're doing pretty well. So uh, that's kind of what we're expecting over the next course of the next, really the next eight months, seven months. So look out for that. Uh, I'm, obviously, I'll be continuing updating you guys. Check out Hobot. You'll see mortgage rates improve on those refinance calculators, things like that. As soon as you guys feel like it's a good time, um, I would say for those who are under, I think, I think my recommendation is the best time to look at a refinance is that you've made seven mortgage payments, seven mortgage payments, so, and it's been 210 days. 210 days and seven mortgage payment from the first mortgage payment. And, you know, the minimum requirement uh, for VA streamline is 0.5% improvement on your mortgage rate. Um, I personally wouldn't do your refinance unless it's at 1% better. So for those who are in the 6% and above, above um, what you want to see is potentially low fives. That's what we're looking for. What's what we're shooting for. So that's where we're, we're trying to get you guys back to. So that way you save a few, a few hundred bucks depending on your loan amount. So uh, anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you guys have, uh, you know, are learning a great deal. If you guys have some uh, ideas for videos that you would want me to do to kind of 
spread information. We could do a quick case studies, quick story. Um, again, I'm here to help you guys out. I'm licensed in every single state, so I can help you with your sell and your buy uh, whenever you guys are ready to have that discussion. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. New cow.